Hello everyone, welcome to a guide for the heroic version of the Zero Hour Outbreak Perfected mission. If you have completed the normal version from Mythrax in the farm, you'll have access to a new node on the EDZ map that allows you to launch the heroic version from orbit like the Whisper mission. Heroic brings along one weekly Singe modifier, this week it's actually Void Singe, and it bumps the enemies from 690 to 700. But unlike the Whisper mission, it doesn't just make the enemies tougher. It introduces entirely new puzzles and completely new huge sections of this place that you wouldn't see in the normal version. Completing the heroic version of Zero Hour rewards you with the incomplete catalyst and that one run of heroic adds 20% to the progress bar. You can't just run it five times though, it has to be one heroic run per week like the runs for the Whisper's catalyst. You'll also need to get precision final blows with the weapon. So I'm going to take you through the heroic mission and explain exactly how to get through it and solve the new puzzles. So the entire first part of the mission from where you spawn in until you drop down the first elevator shaft is exactly the same as the normal version. Kill all of the enemies in each section to open the barrier and escape deeper into the tower ruins. Once you drop down the elevator section and climb out of the air duct, this is where the entire layout changes. Instead of just floating down to your left and running underneath the ship, you'll have to bear right a little and find this air duct on the rooftop that's open. Dropping down it will land you in a room with two different paths covered up by vents. Take the one farthest from you when you land, the one behind the black and blue crates. Crawl in it and take a left and this will drop you down into a yellowish room with two catwalks. There are four switches in here you'll need to activate, one switch on each corner of the room hidden near the red pipes. These switches must be activated to open the cover on a hole, which allows us a platform to jump up to more ledges. The pathway through these red pipes will always be open, but you won't be able to actually make progress until you hit all four switches. Once all four switches are activated, you can jump over the pipes and climb the waterfall. And once you get to the top, you can use the now opened cover to scale these ridiculous slanted walls. The next room requires you to make it across the chasm by landing on the platforms on either side of the walls. This one isn't too bad, just try to get a running start for your first jump since it's a very long one. Reach the end of this section and you'll find a switch which will extend out platforms to make it easier for your teammates. Now comes one of the craziest looking jumping puzzle sections I've ever seen. The scale here is massive, and I'll be honest, I'd probably make it look easier thanks to using the Lion Rampant Exotic Boots for Titans. If you're a Titan, put those on, even the normal version of this is way easier with them. So reaching this pipe brings you to one of the best views of the city we've gotten. And as soon as you're staring face to face with a traveler, take a left and scale this wall on these tiny little platforms. Those will bring you to the pipes, allowing you to reach the corner of the wall here. Be careful once rounding the corner, there are actually folding platforms that will drop you to your death up ahead. They are on a timer, so you can wait and try and time them or just do a mad dash across like I did. Guardian down. After those platforms, you'll have to scale up these beams to get to an open hatch in the wall. Don't forget to take a quick look at the wall from here, it's a gorgeous view. In the right of this room is a slide, one that you'll need to hang to the left and then the right of to avoid getting killed by the pipes. And before the very end of it, you'll want to launch yourself upwards with your jump so that gravity doesn't bring you down into the darkness. Again, definitely easier on a Titan because you can shoulder charge to lose your momentum 
and not smash directly into the wall. Climbing up to the air duct on the right brings us to our final new parkour section. This one is just two long pipes you'll need to scale, which ends up only dropping you off at the fan section. Yup, they weren't letting you skip this part. From the fans until the secret passageway that leads to the giant open room with all the artifacts in it, everything is exactly the same as the normal version. One thing I forgot to mention last video is in the giant abyss room with the silver ledges sticking out, there's a switch at the very end of it that once activated will extend out platforms for your teammates again. I honestly think that's a really nice feature and an improvement from the Whisper mission. Since there's no teleports, it offers a way for the fastest player to help along the slower ones. Make your way through the rest of the mission as normal. The maze with our spooky friend Trevor is the same as the normal version. All you need is the four switches on the walls and you're free. Once you open up the secret passageway to the Crypt Dark's Hall, you'll have to navigate the incinerator room. It's the one with all the tiles on the floor before you get to the artifacts. Be careful because stepping on the wrong tile will burn everyone inside the room. So here's the pathway you'll need to take. You can all go at the same time and be on different parts of the path. As long as no one is stepping on the wrong tile, you're good. And that's the last of the new puzzles. All you have to do now is kill the boss. Easier said than done though, right? There's nothing new here, just the same fight with a bit tougher enemies. So if you're coordinated, it's going to feel pretty much the same as the normal version. Also, if you're able to complete the mission with five minutes or more remaining on either normal or heroic, you're awarded with a sweet Wrath of the Machine style emblem and a triumph for speedrunning the mission. Definitely going to be easier on normal, even though Heroic has a singe, I still think the jumping puzzle in Heroic is way too long for a speedrun. So if you're able to complete the Heroic version before time runs out, you'll receive your Catalyst and 20% progress for it. No doubt there is a Naobi Labs level puzzle somewhere deep inside this place, I'm sure people are already working on it, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the return of a certain ship once it's solved. That's going to do it for this video, thank you for watching everyone, and have a great day.